one more episode for the Yonkers Voice. This is all for the community. We want you to know about Mrs. Hector Santiago, a young community leader that had progressed immensely, came from almost an unknown guy to a guy that is highly recognized today, the creator of Stop and Shake. But not just that. He's a, a proud man, a dad, community leader, a guy that can be seen as an example for the community, somebody who has been down there and now up here. It's an example. So let me introduce you guys to Hector Santiago. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Ben. <laughs> um, how are you doing? My name is Hector Santiago. For those who doesn't, don't know me, I am the founder and the creator of the Stop and Shake Initiative here in Yonkers. We've branched off to Mount Vernon and um, other cities throughout Westchester have been um, inquiring about picking it up. So by the end of the summer, I definitely will have a few more cities. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to be sitting with you. Yeah. Now let me tell you, this interview that is happening today, we've been working on it for maybe about a year, <laughs> year and a half. So he's a hard man to get. Right. So, but finally we got him. We go back to a few years. You know, back in Casa de Café, great community events, great get-together, great right. place to meet, you know, cheat and chat and network. But unfortunately, Casa de Café is no longer there. So, but we're going to give you a little bit of history about Hector. Hector, tell us about you. Let, let's go back about maybe 10, 15 years, whatever you want to go back. And tell us about where you were, where you intend to go and your path from there to here. Um, wow, so yeah, I have a, a, a regular urban story. I was raised by a single parent um, in a less fortunate demographic. We moved around a lot of Yonkers. Um, we, I grew up in Mofer, who, which is now torn down, unfortunately, uh, but it wasn't easy growing up. Um, I definitely came from the struggle. I mean, welfare, um, jumping from house to house, getting evicted, no lights, no food, um, struggling. Um, I dropped out ninth grade. I ran in the streets um, and, you know, did anything I had to do to survive. And I, I've overcome a great deal of adversity. Um, and yeah, Casa de Café was definitely uh, one of my turning points. Um, Rhonda Soto, who was the owner of it, she's a great mentor of mine. Um, shout out to you if you're watching this. I love you, Rhonda. And um, Me yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, she was an amazing woman, uh, very inspirational. She gave me the opportunities, um, and that's what it's all about. You know, one of uh, my quotes that I live by every day is, um, "The path to no fear is scary, and before you cannot be scared of something, it has to terrify you." And Rhonda constantly put me in those situations, from being an open mic host to um, being a community activist. Um, another person who molded my future was. Um, Lucy Moreno from um, Greystone Gardens. She was a big part of my life. She's the one that helped me kind of step away from my gang life. Um, and yeah, man, if it wasn't for individuals in my community who kind of took an interest in me and, and kind of showed me that there's more to life than what I was originally doing, um, I would have never been able to be where I'm at now. So why are you saying, uh, Hector, that if I had asked you this question maybe about 10, 15 years ago, and I said, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? This is going back. Would you say that you would be where you are Absolutely today? Absolutely not. Nowhere near. I mean, I've superseded my expectations of success a long time ago. Um, I, would, I, I, I never even had a visual of what this looks like. You know, I'm still learning as I go. Um, no one in my family um, have done activism work. Um, no one... Um, takes an interest in community like that. I come from a very conditioned family and um, I just wanted to survive, man. If you, 10, 15 years ago, if you would have asked me where do I see myself in 10 years, I would have just said either in jail, God forbid, try not to be locked up um, or, or dead. Um, I, would, I would have said I just wanted to make money and have an apartment, you know, just a real basic basic, basic, everyday life things. So moral of the story is, yes, you can do it. Absolutely. If you have Absolutely. a dream, you have a plan. Absolutely. 
then you can and stay focused. Right, right. My transition has been within the next last five years. I would say five in five years, I've completely changed my mindset. I've started an amazing program. I've gotten proclamations, certificates, um, a full scholarship to Mount Saint Vincent. Um, I mean, the th the the things I've I've been awarded by uh, awarded for um, the journey I've gotten got into the people I've met in the past. I mean, I would have never thought I'm si a board. I, I would have never thought of even being in city hall. You know, um, the first time I was in city hall was about four or five years ago. And now I sit on one of the mayor's executive boards. So it's, um, it's been, it's been amazing. And I, I have to say it's all God. I have no explanation for half the things I've done. I'm just a passenger in his ride. So it has been an amazing journey. Yeah, basically. yeah, um, amazing, and, and, and you know, it's been, it's had its trials and tribulations, of but course. Uh, normally, that's the way things go. Absolutely, you it's know? it's built my resiliency. Exactly, it's not always rosy. Right, know? right. You have to stay focused. You have to be understanding of things will not always absolutely. go your way. Absolutely, but you work yourself, you right. know, and make it happen. Right, and stick to your goal. Stick to your goal, no matter what. Now, before we go you know, too much further, I want to stay a little bit longer with you 10 years ago. Yeah. Because, not that I, I don't know if this is the right word, use you, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. We want to use you as an example okay, right. for the other young men out there so, so they can see and understand that there are options. Right. Okay. That certain ways of living doing illegal stuff is not the way right it's not the way there is other ways they might take a little longer to get there right but once you get there you live much longer right oh my god yeah right? much longer much happier you don't exactly. have to look over your shoulders um exactly with the I, other way you get there quick right right but, but it's dangerous to, right it's dangerous. and i think um the turning point for me was me me breaking my pride you know, I had a lot of pride um, and I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't, you know, a as men were told not to share our feelings, to take it on. Um, and, and that was my thing. You know, I, I didn't want to share nothing. I can handle this. I can do it myself. I was very prideful. Um, I was good with making money in the streets. Um, I was very creative. And, um, and it, it wasn't to the point where I kind of stepped back and, and through mentors in my community like Rhonda, um, Lucy, Greystone, who sat down with me and gave me other options, like Lucy um, exposed me to city meetings. And it was the, through volunteer work that I was able to see a different part of life and make different choices. Um, but I would say that it was when I stripped myself of pride and I just said, you know what, um, I have to ask for help. I have to seek help. I have to, you know, tell people my situation in order to, for them to try to help me. Um, that enough handouts became shareable. And that's where I'm at now. It was, you know, so many people were trying to help me that I just, I was overwhelmed with help and I just started passing it back to my community, thus becoming Hector the Connector, you know. Um, and, and, and to the people out there, you know, I just want to say that no matter what situation you're in, definitely, man, talk to people. You know, I started the Stop and Shake for that. It's a social icebreaker. It, there, there's a big part that works with the police department, but part of it is strictly community, you know. We're going to get there. <laughs> but let's work in a way so people can understand your path. Right, okay, right. We want to get to all of that. So st still staying on your... Right, right. No, but that's, that, the stop and shake is a mindset. It's the mindset I've created. And, and I've, right, I've, I've right. learned to put, um, identify how I changed with the stop and shake. And, 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 and that's more what it, I changed my mindset. I changed the way I looked at people. I stopped judging people. I didn't care if you was a cop, a business owner. I, me growing up, I felt like if you was a business owner, um, you know, you wouldn't understand me. Or if you was a cop, you didn't understand me. Or, or a caseworker, you know, okay. you're not going to understand me. We have different lives. But I stopped, shook everything I knew off and kind of got to know this person. Okay. And um, that's what kind of so, helped me. Since we are at the stop and shake, let's just forget about the past because we already covered it. I see that one of the big issues in our society is that that bridge between community right. and law enforcement right, has right. been broken. Right. Okay. They don't understand the community, some, and the community does not understand them. So stop and shake became that bridge. Right. You shake, you socialize, you get to know the officers who are enforcing the law on the personal level. 
tell us about how that, that idea came about? So the life? idea came about because um, even after I changed my life that I was making good choices, I was working, um, I wasn't in the streets, I wasn't dealing with drugs, I wasn't doing none of that. I was focused on the right path and becoming a man and, and a father, you know, the right father, becoming a role model. Um, I realized that I was still terrified of cops. I mean, terrified. Um, and, and that came from just the way I dressed. I live in this neighborhood. I can't change where I live. You know, this is just the demographic I live in. Um, and, but even after I changed my life, the questions that came from police officers were still, what are you doing here? Where are you going? Um, what are you doing out here this time of night? You know, and it wasn't, um, a, it was all negative kind of, you know, I guess they were doing their job, but it was still weird because of the demographics, right? I, I can't help where I come from or where I live, um, how I dress at times, you know? So um, I felt like, so when this stuff with Mike Brown, Eric Garner happened in the TV, uh, um, and I'm watching this, I had no reference points to contradict what I saw on TV. When I seen these officers acting like that, there was nothing in my head that said, well, not all officers are bad because I never had that good encounter. Um, so I sat down with, um, with the commissioners. Sean Patterson Howard was one of the um, helpers at that time. She helped me organize and she set up a meeting with um, Captain Muller at the time, um, Commissioner Gardner, and we all sat down and we went back and forth. I mean, I battled them and I was, I was tackling the stop and frisk. Why do you do that? It's breaking my constitutional rights. Um, if you can subconsciously stereotype me and say, oh, this is a potential perp, let me frisk them or let me stop and question them. You can say, hey, this is a hardworking man, woman, a student. Let me stop and shake their hand, introduce myself because I might need this conversation later in a different, um, con right, in a different setting or, or in different content. So, um, so that's where the kind of the stop and shake started. I told them, you know, um, I'm not going to change the way I dress. I'm not going to move out of Yonkers. I might not even change my demographics because this is my community. This is where I was born and raised in Yonkers. Um, but I want a little more respect. I want when cops see me that they don't immediately say, oh, this kid has a hoodie or this kid has a fitted on, you know, let me go check what he's doing. They should stop me and say, hey, how you doing, heck? You all right? We're here to serve you. That's it, common courtesy. Um, and that's where I, I created this icebreaker, so to say, because to de-escalate that initial tension. Because even if a cop approached me at the moment, I'm still kind of skeptical as to our encounter. I'm going to say, like, okay, yeah, what are you doing? All right, yeah, I'm okay, officer, how you doing? What is the purpose of this stop? Um, and vice versa, if you stop an officer, you know, he'll answer your questions, but he's a little skeptical, like, okay, what do you want? from this, yeah, I'm okay. So with the stop and shake, um, you, you both come to a common understanding as to what that encounter is for. Um, if a cop approaches you, hey, you heard of the stop and shake, you can be like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you want, how you doing, what's up, and vice versa. Cool. And that's when we launched the stop and shake initiative to somewhat be like a social icebreaker and a de-escalator for police and community. Um, but from that, it's poured out to the community, you know, because you still have officers who are not gonna follow it. Um, you have officers that, uh, some officers, I mean, get it immediately. They're like, Hector, I love it. This is what we've been doing for years. This is on the beat. This is the family community. Um, but some people, uh, some officers. But you know, Hector, officers are human beings just like right, you and I. Right, okay? correct. There are some great officers. There is some that are not so great. <laughs> right. There is great doctors. There is some that are not so great. Right, right. Priests, mechanics, plumbers. They're people like anybody else. Right. Okay. But I, like you, and I remember our early conversations about law enforcement, and my opinion about them were not that bright. Right. Okay. But once I started these with Yonkers Boys and I gave them a chance, right. I got to know some, and I began to understand that the law enforcement and the cops of today are not the same as the right. cops of 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> Like you said, mindset have changed. Right, right. Okay. They now grew up in a different environment. Right. A different community. A different way of thinking. Correct. Right. So I think that the community needs to give them a chance. Just because they cops does not mean they bad. And just because some did bad don't mean that they all do bad. Okay. So we need to give them a chance and we need to build that bridge. Right. Okay. 
the only way I think and even in com in the communities though you know um I, I would love the officers also you know don't immediately stereotype someone or or think that someone is bad in the sense you know because of the way they look or the way they in the community that they're in because sometimes we can't you know we can't help where we grew up or who, the people we know but that goes both ways right absolutely Just yeah 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 they cops right vice versa right so it's it's really funny I went from not knowing not one officer at all never even encountering in a conversation to two to three years later knowing over 1500 cops New York State wide. I mean, state troopers, Mount Vernon, Yonkers, and 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 I've realized that there are some bad apples that you know through community involvement and activism we can kind of wean out. Um, but there's so many more good officers who have gotten on the force. People, you know, young people like me who joined the force to make a difference, yeah, and we got to help them help us. But let's emphasize that even though there is bad cops, bad doctors, the percentage. Oh my God! Right. It's very small. Right, right. Yeah, it's very small. The only problem is when that very small percentage does something, it's that wrongdoing is magnified by the media and it Absolutely. becomes a huge issue. Absolutely, and it happens in communities too. You know, there's, there's communities where there's maybe a hundred people that are, you know, hanging outside and stuff. And out of those hundred people, only one person has a gun. You know, in some blocks, there's one gun shared with 10, 15 people. But that one person with a gun puts the perspective on the neighborhood. And, 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 and that's the same thing with the uh, department, you know. Um, there's one cop that makes the whole department look horrible, yep. you know. Um, and, and that's why I started the, ice, the stop and shake. And even in the communities, I tell them, look, if you're not going to stop and shake a police officer uh, because of your lifestyle, I get it. No one's telling you to stop your hustle, make your money, feed your children. Um, but stop and shake the people calling the cops on you. The only reason they are calling the cops on you is because they can't have a conversation with you personally. If they can speak to you, then they wouldn't be calling the cops and there'll be less cops called to our communities. But um, there's, there's just individuals that, you know, they look out their window, they see what's going on. And I know in their heart, they would love to go out the window and say, hey, Tom, hey, John, you know, move down a little, get, you know, move from here. It's a little loud. Um, but because of the, 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 the fear of that encounter, they say, you know what, let me just call the cops real quick and have them scurry them away. Avoid the confrontation. Right, and, and that becomes a confrontation sometimes, you know? So, now let's move to something that Actor just said. Guns. Guns on the street. We need to get those guns right. out of the street. Right. One less gun. I'm talking about illegal guns, of course. Okay. One right. less gun. It's potentially one life saved. Absolutely. That is a great program going on right here in our city. Uh, I think the, well, I don't think I know, Chief Hodges. Shout out to Hodges, great guy. Shout out to Hodges. Started this program, it's called Cash for Guns. Turn a gun in. Save a life, make some money, and do a great service for the community. Cash for guns. Mm -hmm. Go on Yonkers Voice and we will blast it out so how and, you can turn and it And just up. for a little information, the way cash for guns work for the community who don't know, I mean, I haven't um, personally handed in a gun because I don't know of any at the moment. Um, but I know of individuals who use this um, program. Um, it's completely anonymous. Um, you can actually call them and say, hey, look, I left it in a paper bag um, in this bush or something, you know, whatever the case is. But um, it, it doesn't have to be personal. They don't need to know your name. They don't need to know nothing. If you just have a gun that you want to get rid of or whatever the case is, man, just get rid of it, man. I came up from Yonkers. Back in the day, Yonkers, man, I, 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 we used to fight. It was fighting. You know, it was fair fights. You know, we, we, of course, people circled around, but they respected a one-on-one. -on -one. And after we fought, if we had to shake it off and never talk again, you know, we wouldn't. Um, but, yeah, you know, I'd rather people fight than shoot. Than shoot. Right, right. Again, guys, cash for guns. Okay. Anonymously, right. you call, report a gun. They will give you a number. There is a system. Your name is not, does not need to be known, but you can do a great service to the community. Now let's move forward a little further, mm -hmm. you know, a little more. I heard about this view, awards that you've been getting. Okay. Right. And that's something that you can show because only people who does positive stuff is recognized 
at your level. My God, right? You this is all God's blessings. You want to share um, a couple of those things? So these are just a couple of words. The first award I got was from um, Kingdom Church um, on Palisade. Can you turn around so they can see This it? is it. It's um, presented to Hector Santiago for Community Leader of the World. It comes from um, Kingdom Christian Cultural Center on Palisade Avenue. Um, Hassel and his congregation um, awarded me. And this is one of my first awards. And for me, these awards mean everything because, I mean, for I, I will put them in a box and forget about them, but they're tangible goals for my kids. You know, my kids get older and they can look at these certificates and, and the awards. And the community. Of course, and the community, you know, but uh, uh, family's always first. You take care of your family and through right. that, you, you know, you, it'll, it'll just pour into the community. People will receive that and realize that. Um, and for me, it's like, you know, these are tangible goals. My daughter will one day get up and say, well, have options, you know, look at these certificates and say, you know, there's a way I need to be. There's a type of mindset I need to have to get things like this. Um, I'm the only person in my family who ever has gotten things like this. Um, and, um, and what about the others? Let's, let's, let's go through them. Oh my God. Because we don't have all day long. Right, so right. Let's go in it show them so they know that they can do it okay so this was a surprise i've got um in the mail a few weeks ago this is a book from Lori fidel it's called um bias free policing a search-based approach um it's a criminology book um that this woman wrote she's a professor in florida she goes around the world talking about you know bias free and she actually included me in her book um, this is also an award that I've gotten from Mount Vernon, um, from the Colin Allen Daycare. It's a childhood development center. I got this certificate from the county executive, um, Astorino, uh, just acknowledging what I'm doing. Um, I also got an award from Congress, acknowledging the stuff I'm doing from Congressman Engel. Uh, I got a citation from the mayor saying you know he acknowledges what i'm doing this is the certificate from the mount vernon council all of them uh what else i also have a proclamation from christopher johnson um i have a proclamation hanging on the wall there from mike spano um and this was this was actually one of the coolest things um this was uh from the westchester board of legislation um, just acknowledging what I do and, you know, what I've done. Um, but overall, they have proclaimed that Tuesday, June 20th is Hector Santiago Day in Westchester County. That's tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow is Hector's day. Tomorrow will be Hector Santiago's day in Westchester County. And I think this is amazing because it gives me a, a goal every year. I can now sit back and see what I've done in that year june 20th i've now personally considered it my reflection day yeah. what have i done what am i going to do yeah. you know set my goals so um i'm thinking of doing something at yonkers brewery tomorrow night come by check it out and let's celebrate hector santiago day this is the last one this is a community service award i got from um, mount vernon for the stop and shake program um yesterday on father's day i got a phone call from um councilman wallace from mount vernon he actually wants to honor me and his honoring ceremony on Thursday. Yes. So um, I have a few more things. And again, this is all for my kids. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you the million dollar question. Which of those rewards are you more proud of? But I'm not going to, okay? I'm not gonna ask which one of your girlfriend <laughs> was not. the best one. Cause I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that you're proud of every single right, one right. of them. I think the hardest thing I ever had to do, um, which makes me just love all my awards is um, stepping away from my family which was a really hard part because me growing up, my mother used to always tell me, you know, hey, Hector, change your life or you're going to end up in jail. You're going to be dead. I'm tired of getting these phone calls. You know, I come home bloody. I come home, you know, bruised or whatever the case. Um, but then when I changed my life, it was, oh, why are you, why are you being fake? You know, um, why are you talking white? And, and I'm like, what? No, I educated myself. I changed the words. And, 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 and I realized that, Everyone has a time, you know, and as long as you stick to your goal, you know, sometimes it might be your family, sometimes it might be your friends, um, no matter what it is, stick to your goal, stick true to yourself, and um, focus, 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 reach out to people. Um, anyone out there, you can always reach out to me. I, every encounter, I start off your family, and it's up to you to change that, but if you need something, give me a call. I'm Hector the Connector. If I don't have it, I know someone who does. 
Um, and, and that's what community is about. It takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a bunch of loving relationships to create a village. And that's where I'm trying to bring everything back to. So, moral of the story, I think, is become the change Absolutely. you want to see. Nail on head. Okay? Right. He became the change that he wanted to see. Right. Sometimes it takes an adjustment, as anything else in life. You know, it doesn't come just like that. Right, you have right. To work on it. I make a lot of mistakes. But, but at the end, and we will always make mistakes. Absolutely, but it's growing life. from them, okay? right? We grow from those mistakes. Absolutely, it's normal. So Yonkers Voice brought you another episode, and this one was so you get to know a little bit more than you knew yesterday about actor Satya. Okay, I got to know a little more, more about him today. And I'm happy, or I would hope, that we were able to show you or to, well, let you hear from himself the changes, who he became. I'm becoming, he, too. Be, and becoming. So, if you are on Yonkers Voice, if you do things positive, you know, for the community, get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. We show the bad stuff that, that happens in Yonkers, but believe me, we want to, sh to show you also the positive stuff that goes on in York. And there is plenty of it. And an example right here. So let's give a shout to Yonkers Voice Thank actor. You. Shout out to Yonkers Voice. We Follow, with you. like and share. And don't forget, there is a, a, a page. Is that a page for Stop and Shake? Yes, yes. I have a Stop and Shake page on, um, Stop and Shake page on Facebook. You can like um, Hector Santiago on Facebook. Um, I'm the people's mayor on Instagram. And um, yeah, I'm here to help you help us help everyone. So thank you for tuning in and yeah. like, share. And if you help him, you help us, we help everywhere, everyone, right. we have a better community. Where can, we support, can always be support, support each other, 110%. Support each other, community. Peace out, YV.